Hey guys, this is Phil Galfon for BlueFirePoker.com, and this is going to be part three of this three-part series of uh, what was me playing two tables of 501k, but um, the second session, I didn't realize this when I started recording, but the second session was only 60 minutes, the, thir uh, the first one, this one, uh, was 90 minutes, so the last video will just be a one-tabling video, but hopefully we can get more into my reads um, on the players and uh, talk about the hands that I'm not involved in as well as the hands that I am involved in uh, given that we won't have as much to discuss or as many hands going on at once uh, Jack-5 suited there with 150 big blinds I think in a vacuum it's profitable 3 bet against almost all players but um, if you're 3 betting every time you have a hand like that then uh, it becomes not profitable assuming they can adjust but given that Steve and I haven't played that much No Limit together, I think that I'd prefer uh, a 3-bet there, just because there's no history of me doing it, and in the future there probably uh, won't be a lot of consequences um, for me playing a kind of unbalanced style, since he won't be playing with me in the future, uh, so he won't be able to capitalize on the information he has. Ace-King Offsuit is a very standard 3-bet. I would probably 3-bet this 95 percent of the time, I would say. Um, maybe even a little bit more. I think it's a little bit important to sometimes be able to call like this against a lot of different players, uh, a lot of tougher players, but um, for the most part it just plays so well to 3-bet. Um, it's one of the best hands you can have to show up over 4-bet, and it makes your range, uh, your 3-betting range a lot stronger as far as hands that can show over a 4-bet, because uh, you know, ace-king offsuit, there are a lot more combos of that than there are of um, queens, for instance, which is also a hand you can shove. So here with ace-queen suited, I decided to call. Um, I definitely don't mind the multi-way pot with it, and it plays fairly well in a single raise pot. I would usually 3-bet this hand. Um, and actually, given that I just 3-bet him, he might be more inclined to 4-bet bluff me, and I, I would be shoving with a hand like this, but Z and I don't have a history of a lot of 4-bet bluffing, so I don't think that his 4-bet bluffing frequency would be high enough to where I'd be excited to 3-bet and get this in. Uh, I might still do it, but uh, it's not a super attractive option. And... I check called the flop, which is a little bit loose, but I think ace high is often the best hand. Uh, I do have the backdoor spade draw, which becomes relevant now, but um, is a small factor. And I do have two overs, and my overs are cards that he is going to barrel a lot of the time. So, uh, assuming uh, you know he doesn't have a huge hand, if the with all of his air, if the turns a queen or an ace, he's going to be betting. Um, Definitely, I think all of his gutters, flush draws, things like that, as well as maybe even like an 8 or 6s or ace 5 or something like that for value slash protection. And then um, I think a lot of just pure air. So I get value uh, in that respect. And like an ace or a queen, a king is a card that he's going to barrel on a lot. So I think the possibility that ace high is good combined with my um, equity, my immediate odds and my implied odds, I think that. If he does have a good hand, or even doesn't have a good hand, he might be bluffing on a spade. Um, and if he does have a good hand, he wouldn't really put me on a spade draw almost ever. And I might, I more than likely could get a check raise in on the river and, and get it called. Uh, now, when the river bricks off, I mean, you can flip a coin, but I'd imagine, yeah, I'd imagine I folded here. Z's capable of value betting me pretty thinly because he knows I, I like to call down. And his pre-flop range there is pretty tight. Um, I mean, we, we just have a lot of history. <laughs> I'll put it that way. So I actually haven't played a ton of deep stack no limit this table's getting pretty deep um, around when they introduced deep tables I just started, I'd started playing a lot more PLO almost exclusively PLO and even when games like this ran the no limit games they didn't run um, 
most people just bought in for 100 big blinds because that was, or or less because that's what they were used to. Um, and the mixed games, the HA games, everybody bought in for. I think the max was 100 at all the tables. They didn't introduce deep tables. I don't even know if they have them now uh, at HA. But I mean, I without this being a concept video on on deep stack tables, I which I may or may not be even qualified to make given my limited experience, but um, I can talk a little bit about some of the obvious adjustments uh, that I see. Um, I should have opened 8-4 suited there on the, in the cutoff. Uh, but anyways, um, position just becomes that much more powerful. So uh, I would be opening a much tighter range from early position, calling and 3-betting from late position with a much wider range. Uh, it looks like Z might be doing that as he just now three bet Mr. Smokey twice in a row, um, or almost twice in a row. Anyways, hands like Ace King offsuit go down in value quite a bit, and until you start playing against players who are just super aggro. So um, a player like Tom uh, Tom Duan can play a hand like Ace King offsuit um, 200 big lines deep a lot more um, aggressively than let's just say a player like Z who's a tighter player than Tom doesn't have the reputation for bluffing as much and for being as crazy um, just because the more aggressive players um, are getting called down so light because of their wide bluffing range that um, top pair, top kicker becomes a pretty good hand to 3-street for value, to 3-bet and then 3-street for 200 big blinds for value. Whereas um, a tighter player, uh, a lot of the times they get called down on 3-streets in a, in a re-raise pot for 200 big blinds and they just have top pair, top kicker, uh, they're usually not going to have the best hand. So you sometimes have to play hands like like top pair type hands a lot more cautiously. Alright, this is pretty interesting, we can talk about this. Um, Z3-bet. Um, Mr. Smokey called, and Z made a pretty small bet on the flop, which can really mean a lot of things. I think that on a board like this, it's tough for Mr. Smokey to have a hand that nails it, because aces and kings will be four betting most of the time, and ace king will be four betting most of the time. Pocket threes is really what makes sense, um, and some big draws, maybe like ace ten of diamonds. Um, so Z doesn't have to bet that much because Mr. Smokey's range is super weak. So with all of Z's air, he can bet small and get a lot of folds, I, I think. Because Mr. Smokey should have a lot of like pocket sevens or eight nine suited, things like that, um, that will just fold to a small bet. Um, and then, you know, when he does have a big hand, um, he might have trouble getting all, all of his stack in, but I think it just plays better to be betting smaller there against Mr. Smokey's weak range. And in position, it just gives him a lot of options. Um... I mean, for instance, there. I'm not sure when Mr. Smokey raised folded because it looked like he took some time to fold after the raise. Um, but I assume it was probably air, and he just, I guess, was considering four bet bluffing and, and decided not to. It would be pretty crazy. Um, I assume Z had a good hand there, but he's definitely capable of not, and I think that that would be a good spot. Um, to come back over the top. I think his raise was kind of bigger than I would like, um, just given that how pot, how big the pot was at that point, and it's and Mr. Smokey's range is pretty polarized. Um, he's not going to be doing that with like um, eight nine of diamonds, for instance, and then shoving over uh, a three bet, a flop three bet. So uh, he's going to have a lot of very strong hands that he's going with, or he's going to have a hand that he's definitely not. Um, able to put much action in, and I think that since his decision is made by the time he check raises, um, that is, he's either decided I'm going to go with his hand or I'm bluffing, um, Z doesn't need to make a big raise to convince him of that. So either way, if Z had air or a big hand, I would have preferred a smaller 3-bet on the flop. Um, so yeah, the other hand, I 3-bet queen-10 offsuit, but uh, in kind of a standard squeeze spot, I think that Steve's calling pretty light there on the button, um, as deep Z is when, when Z opens, and queen-10 offsuit is definitely, I would categorize it as a bluff 3-bet, but it's one that has some decent potential um, as far as, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, 
excuse me, you know, just flopping top pair. Um, and, like, it hits enough top pair type hands that it plays well, but at the same time, it a lot of the good cards, i.e. the ace and the king, uh, good bluff cards, uh, don't connect with your hands, so you get some folds on those boards, and you do connect with some boards. And I think just you take it down pretty flop enough to make it, I mean, almost profitable in a vacuum, given that um, I think they actually both respect my raise in that spot a decent amount. So here I decided to check it down with jacks. I think that I usually lean on the side of... I'm going to pause it. I haven't paused yet. <laughs> um, I lean on the side of betting the flop just because I'm going to be betting this with all my air. Um, so if I'm just betting this with air, uh, flush draws, and ace x plus, uh, my range is going to be comprised of mostly air. So uh, I risk becoming um, exploitable um, by being called down by basically any pair or even like king high type hands, uh, at least on the flop, you know, depending on my turn and river betting frequencies, but he can be comfortable making a lot of moves on the flop, check raising a lot of flops and calling with any piece uh, very comfortably, so I like this in my value range, <coughs> uh, at least most of the time. Uh, it also makes my hand a little bit more deceptive. Uh, when I check back this flop, now you can definitely check back this flop with air, but most people don't, and I don't usually. So when I check back this flop, it's going to be very tough for me to get value on future streets out of my jacks, because it looks like I have a made hand. Um, and it looks like I have a made hand that's worse than ace-x, which is a you know, very, very reasonable assumption. And I, I don't generally like to give that much information up about my hand early in the hand against a good hand reader if I don't have to. Um, but that said, checking is fine, and you can't just bet every single flop, because then you also risk uh, being too check raisable. So you should be checking behind these flops a little bit with your air and a little bit with hands like this. But I'd, I'd lean towards betting them with most hands as a preflop raiser in position, and out of position, actually. Now on the river, I actually don't really like this call. Uh, I think that it's just way too easy for him to have me beat. The problem is that... Um, go back and look at the board. The problem is that, yes, he's probably not value betting. Um, here's my thought process for calling, I'm sure. He's not value betting super thin, like six of clubs or something like that. He also um, bets the turn with a lot of his club draws, so unless he was going for a turn check raise with, um, let's say, queen jack of clubs, uh, or some, you know, eight, nine of clubs, whatever, he, if he has a one club hand, he's usually betting the turn to um, semi bluff because he doesn't really want to check call with like jack ten with the uh, jack of clubs. Um, so he'd he'd rather bet that hand. Now it turns out he had ace ten with the ten of clubs, which he was trying to induce a bet from me. Uh, I assume he was just going to call, but that that gets me to bet a lot of my air or you know a hand like this, which I almost did bet on the turn. Um, but the problem is that he almost always has, um, not almost always, but he's very likely, if he doesn't have a club, to have a pair in his hand, um, an ace, a king, an eight even, and I don't think that he would turn those into bluffs most of the time. I think he'd just try to show them down. So I think that his range is a little bit too strong here as far as, uh, are there aren't enough hands he can bluff with, and um, it's pretty easy for him to have a club in his hand. Not sure why I have a cough today. I'm sorry about that. I haven't coughed once today until I, until I started talking. I guess I haven't talked to anybody today. <coughs> I didn't realize I went back this far. Anyways, back to deep stack play. I think that, um, yeah, a couple of the things I said. Uh, position goes up in value. Obviously, you're one pair, top pair type hands go way down in value, and your speculative hands go way up in value. So I'd not be more inclined to 3-bet a hand like 10-8 suited than I would a hand like ace-king offsuit. I'd rather, um, against tough players, uh, and that would have been a good spot to 3-bet with queen-8 suited, although I have been 3-betting a lot lately. Um, against tough players, ace-king offsuit's going to be really tough to play out of position, and 10-8 um, suited actually flops a lot of hands that you can put a lot more pressure with. Because the thing is, when you're putting 
200 big blinds into the pot. Um, so when you're getting stacks in with deeper stacks, I'm going to pause here. Actually, I'll keep talking because I'm not involved in the hand. Um, when you're getting stacks in with 200 big blinds, your value range becomes much narrower. So uh, there are less hands that you can force that much money in the pot with um, and expect to be called by worse. And therefore, semi-bluffs um, become much more powerful because you can basically turn all their hands into bluff catchers by making your range seem very strong, um, your value range. Um, and, you know, they can expect you to just be that often throwing in 200 big blinds um, with air. So, actually, let me try to think of an example. Um, so, if you have ace-10, um, I'll pause so you guys don't have to multitask. Um, let's say here I have I have queen-3 suited, or I have any two cards. I raise the button, and Z calls in the big blind with ace-10 offsuit. And the flop is 10-8-4 um, rainbow. Uh, with 100 big blinds, uh, you're dynamic with a lot of opponents. You can check raise that ace 10 offsuit and get it in. Um, but if he check raises that ace 10 offsuit, which is n not a bad play, I would argue that it's a good play, uh, game theory wise. Uh, if he check raises that ace 10 offsuit and I 3 bet, his hand is now a complete bluff catcher. Um, he only beats my bluffs. Uh, whereas if we are a little bit, and and I'm less likely to be. 3-betting with hands like open-enders because now I might not have odds to call a shove, whereas if we were 100 big blinds deep, I'd be 3-betting my open-enders and calling a shove, or I'd be committing myself with my open-enders, for instance, or um, a hand like King-10 or Jack-10 even, let's say the board has a flush draw, then I'm much more likely to get, get it in with a weaker 10. So since the hands like that your top pair type hands become a lot tougher to play and a lot tougher to get value out of. Um, it helps to have a lot of semi bluffs in your range, and that way, let's say he, let's say the board's what is it, eight, eight, ten, four. Uh, let's say two spades, and I have seven, five of spades. I can call his check raise, and then on a brick turn, shove over his turn bet. And that puts him in a really difficult spot with ace-10, whereas if we're 100 big blinds deep, he has a snap call. Um, 200 big blinds deep, he probably, against a reasonable range against me, can't get that in. And it makes it much tougher for him to play. I'm sorry, I didn't think out these examples before the video. I didn't know I was going to be talking about deep stack concepts. But I think that illustrates the point at least a little bit. Um, that you can three-barrel... You can three bet bluff. Um, you c you can put a lot more money in the pot with semi bluffs um, quite often than you can with uh, your made hands, just because you don't flop made hands that are strong enough often enough to put that much pressure on people or put that much money in the pot, I should say. Uh, another thing that's really important with deep stacks is. Uh, deception. The value of deception disguising your hand goes way up. So, for instance, okay, here's an extreme hypothetical. But let's say mm, I raise the button. And, or here, let's say Mr. Smokey raises the button, Steve Sung's in the big blind, and they are 1,000 big blinds deep. So they each have a million on the table. This is an extreme example. Um, take that for what it's worth. It's just trying to prove a point. Um, and let's say Steve Sung calls in the big blind with pocket aces. He's closing the action. Smokey thinks that Steve Sung would never call there with pocket aces. Um, shoot, I might have to make this deeper. Okay, let's say they're three million deep. Same exact thing. Um, he calls in the big blind with pocket aces, and uh, flop is ace eight four rainbow. Um, Steve check raises. Smokey three bets, Steve four bets. Um, if Smokey's sure that Steve can't have aces, um, he's either gonna he's gonna put Steve on a bluff, um, or him going crazy with something like ace eight or fours. Uh, in which case, you know, he might either try to slow play or induce more raises on the flop. But he's never gonna fold his hand. 
um, and he's going to try to get more money in the pot one way or another, um, and he's going to stack off for $3 million, uh, 501k. Um, this is going to happen super rarely, which is why I had to uh, increase their stack sizes to be so big, but the few times that it happens, and it doesn't have to be exactly that scenario, but the few times that it happens, uh, if you make, if you capitalize on it that much because of how deep stacks are and how certain they are that you can't have a hand, um, it it just becomes a lot more valuable. It makes up for the fact that you're losing your preflop edge. Uh, you're not getting in as much preflop with really good equity edge. Um, you're weakening your three betting range, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But at 100 big blinds, none of that matters all that much. I mean, deception definitely matters and is a huge part of poker. But as you get deeper, um, putting people on hands becomes a much bigger deal because there are less scenarios when you can just say, all right, well, whatever, I'm all in because I have top pair and there's a flush draw. Um, or, you know, I have a gutter and a flush draw and whatever. Um, it just becomes a lot more important to read hands and street by street there's more information because you can get more raises in throughout the hand whereas you know at 100 big blinds at 100 big blinds you can open for 3.5 get called that's one bet the flop get check raised that's two then bet the turn bet the river so that's four uh, or that's five total whereas if you're deeper a lot more bets can go in um, and with every bet somebody's range narrows a little bit um, so just hand reading becomes that much more important so hand disguising becomes that much more important I hope the ACS -ace example didn't scare you <laughs> that was um, a little bit far-fetched and um, not the best way maybe to illustrate that point but Maybe I'll think about it and uh, come up with a better example in a future video. So here Steve leads in to Z who raised preflop. Um, and he leads half pot, which is really weird. I This is an unusual play that I don't run into a lot, and I don't know how I'd interpret it. But you can never go that wrong. Uh, with stacks this deep, with raising this bet with a wide variety of hands, and calling it with a wide variety of hands and, and making moves on later streets. Uh, you have good immediate pot odds because his bet's pretty small, and given that he didn't 3-bet, I think that 10s and jacks are not really in his range. Jack-10 certainly is. 3s certainly are. Um, as well as a hand like Queen-Jack, Ace-Jack, but I just think it's air enough of the time and you have so much room to maneuver and take him off of a hand like Queen Jack on future streets when the turn is, uh, say, an ace or whatever else can come. Um, as well as, you know, hopefully you have a hand with some kind of equity or backdoor draws or something. Alright, so he's bet half pot twice. He's called twice. Um, and he's taken his time to call twice. Um, that could obviously be either an act or genuine tough decision on his part. I would lean towards a tough decision given that this is an unusual line by Steve. So he bets pretty big on the river and I mean he did play it a way that he would play a jack. Uh, I'm trying to think if he would play hands like um, pocket eights this way on the flop and turn so I think he would definitely bluff the river with pocket eights if he got there this way but I'm not so sure he would be playing it this way on the flop and turn I think he might though just bet the flop to protect and he's not really comfortable check calling on this board um, same exact thing on the turn just get Z to fold his draws and his maybe get value from ace high hands or get value from draws what have you and then now on the river um, he's counterfeited he can rep a jack pretty well so we'll go ahead and bet there are also the obvious open-enders, gutters, and the occasional total air. Um, so presuming that Z has a hand as strong as ace-high, um, maybe even king-high, 
I would be inclined to call here, I think. Uh, but it's definitely close, and I definitely don't know enough st about Steve's game, or I think that he has an exploitable enough game that I would be sure about a call there. Um, that's just what I lean towards, and I like to call. I would expect Z to call on the river definitely with any jack or ten. So I think he did have a hand like ace high there, or maybe king high. He could have had a hand like uh, king queen, or even king nine. That um, he was, you know, somewhat floating, somewhat calling for value, thinking that his king high was good enough of the time. It is also possible Z had a hand like pocket eights and realized he couldn't call on the river. And was considering bluff raising or just considering being annoyed that he got counterfeited on the river. And so ASAC's offsuit hands are good ones to four bet bluff. I don't I definitely don't four bet bluff every time I get three bet with ASEX offsuit because then my range would be gross and really weak. But it's definitely not a hand I can call with. Um and the ace does have some value. The value is, first of all, card removal. I'm sure this is a review for a lot of people, but um, now there are three aces left in the deck rather than four, so it's less likely he has some of the um, very common three-betting hands like ace, 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 king, ace, queen. And if he does have a hand like... Um, well, there are a lot of hands. If he has a hand that he ends up calling with, which I think is possible, um, even if it's a hand as strong as jacks or tens, now I have an overcard, um, and I don't think he'll be calling here with a lot of ace-king, ace-queen type hands, maybe ace-queen suited, ace-jack suited, but so often on an ace-high flop I'll have, almost always, I'll have the best hand and be able to get value. Queen 9 offsuit is a fine open from the cutoff. I'm a little surprised I opened it and didn't open 8-4 um, suited, which I think is maybe a little bit better in this situation. Mr. Smokey ended up folding, which is obviously what I wanted to happen. I think that I, I think I have a pretty balanced 4-betting range as far as... Um, It, it makes it pretty tough to be. It makes it close if he has a hand like Ace Queen offsuit there uh, between all of his options. I think that's maybe a good place to be. Maybe even Ace Jack suited uh, is right where you want to be. I think that if they have a tough decision, I don't know why I'm sitting out. I think I come back in a second. Um, if they have a tough decision with ace-king offsuit in that spot, then your range is too tight. And obviously if, if they have an easy decision with, with ace-jack suited, then your range is a little bit too loose. And that'll vary as, as stack sizes change. Alright, so ace-jack offsuit. I wouldn't hate a 3-bet, I wouldn't hate a call, this is assuming Steve folds. Um, if Steve calls, I would lean more towards a 3-bet, just because I think that um, he doesn't strike me as the type of player to be uh, slow playing a big hand here, and I don't expect either of them to mess around with me that much. I actually expect maybe uh, a lot of times a desirable situation would be for Z to fold and Steve to call with a dominated hand like Queen Jack suited. And then we both flop a jack and get it in. But then both folding is fine, and this also isn't uh, a great hand to see a multi-way flop with out of position. So it's not like I'm losing a ton of value by 3-betting it and not using it in my calling range. I mean, I am. it is a good hand to have in my calling range, but it's not as good as it is heads up 100 big blinds deep. So 5-4 suited here is a premium hand in some ways uh, this deep. And I definitely will never be folding it from this position. I'll be 3-betting or calling with it. 
Um, I think either is fine. I think I lean towards a three bet. I think with nine eight suited as a little more calling value, and I'd be more likely to call. But five four suited is a little bit tough to play out of position, uh, even this deep, just because your flushes are low. So um, it makes flush. Sometimes you get flush over flush or flush drawed over flush drawed flush draw over flush drawed um, and you know your top pair your two pair hands aren't as good and you're, you're very rarely almost never gonna flop top pair I kinda wish I had um, stats on this session because it seems like a lot of three bettings going on and I'd like to um, see some three bet numbers for these guys. I think I think that game theory wise, you should be able to three bet less out of position deep. But in practice, it oftentimes works better when you're deeper, just because people don't react to it well. Um, I think people fold way too much to three bets when they're 200 big blinds deep. They don't four bet nearly enough. And when they do call, they don't make enough moves after the flop because, uh, and that's that's in my limited experience playing deep. So uh, if some of you play deep stack, you know, 10, 20 all the time, I don't, I would trust your judgment over mine there. But it's just really tough to play three bet pots out of position this deep. And if you are up against a good opponent who is putting a lot of pressure on you, you need to tighten up your 3-betting range quite a bit, in my opinion. And really just try to make your money by playing pots um, on the button in the cutoff. King Queen offsuit, uh, very standard raise, obviously, and really good flop for us. It's a flop that they'll probably expect us to see bet near 100% of the time, and we have a very strong hand, so we're towards the top of our range, very, very close to the top of our range. Um, I'm not really sure what to think of his pre-flop calling range on the button. I think it'll be a little bit wider than it would be if we were shallower. Um, I definitely think he's calling the flop with any pair, with any ace high, uh, and the occasional float. Definitely with sets, some some percentage of the time. But I'm definitely betting again here for value. First of all, I'm still uh, near the very top of my range, which you know in practice you should be thinking about what hands are going to call me, <coughs> um, what hands are going to fold to me, what's the best way to make money out of this particular player. But in theory. Uh, game theory wise when you're constructing a betting range you should I mean let's pretend there's no check raising range and no slow playing range when you're de deciding what to bet um, you definitely want to always be betting your very strongest hands and your very weakest hands at least let's say on the river um, you want to have a good amount of your weak bluffs uh, on the turn, it's a little different because you have semi bluffs and you want to have better semi bluffs. But you want to have some bluffs and you want to have your strongest hands. So um, I, this is a really standard bet. But I'm saying in this situation, if I had a weaker hand, even like a, I don't know, ace eight, um, ten eight, I'd likely go for an, another street of value and possibly three. Uh, just because I'm still kind of close to the top of my range in that spot. And this is a board where it's very tough for him to have me beat. Um, I think that he is not playing hands like 8-3 suited. 8-5 suited, he probably is calling, but I think he would 3-bet that a decent amount of the time. King-3 suited, king-8 suited, king-5 suited, I think kind of the same thing. Uh, and same with 5-3, I think that he might be playing all of those, but I would expect him to 3-bet much more often than just call. So I don't expect him to have 2 pair very often. He can definitely have a set, um, any of the sets really. Um, but, you know, just hand combo-wise, there aren't that many of them. So I'm not going to concern myself too much with that. Ace-King is definitely possible. I'd expect him to 3-bet that close to 80-90% of the time, though. So I'm not going to put too much weight in that. I just think that 
King Jack, King Ten are huge parts of his range. I think that uh, Pocket Sevens, hands like that, are massive parts of his range. And then I think that um, I think he has a lot of like three, four hands like that. Um, potentially some Ace High floats that picked up uh, like Ace Four Gutter or a flush draw. And now on the river, uh, I hit top two pair. Very happy about my hand. And I bet I mess around with my timing a little. But I wouldn't read too much into that. And he shoves. And I'll pause it. Um, it's a little bit tougher than than it looks. I mean, it looks like I have top two pair, and I should snap call. Um, so I'm just very much towards the top of my range. I know I've said that a lot this hand. Um, but the thing is, it's very unlikely he's value raising a worse hand. Um, like I said, I don't think he has a two pair type hand. Uh, like king eight or king five, he's definitely not value raising five eight. Um, I think that um, king queen for him is possible. That would, he would actually be very likely to play it this way, but there are fewer combos of king queen just because I have a king and a queen. Um, I remember trying to decide if. Queen Queen eight was possible because that's obviously a hand that hit on the river. Um, and might be inclined to raise, and you know, because I will have a lot of t top pair type hands going for value or lower two pair. So I think Queen eight might be raising here for value and would play it the same on the flop and turn. I think Queen eight suited. Um, may or may not three bet me pre flop. I also have. You know, two of the queens accounted for, so there are only two combos of that hand. And then there are all the sets, which there are, what, six combos of each? Um, with the exception of kings and queens, which there are one combo of each. Wait, if there are three, then there are one, two... Oh, there are only three combos of each set. Right? Two, three... Yeah. So three combos of each set, uh, the lower sets, one combo of kings, one combo of queens, um, two combos of queen eight suited, four combos of king queen. Sorry if I got any of this wrong. <laughs> uh, but anyways, the question becomes then, how likely is it that he will turn a hand like um, ace four of spades or ace jack of hearts or um, pocket fours or eight seven of clubs into a bluff here because hand combo wise he's gonna have those so so much more of the time and that's a question that I really you know don't know the answer to if I knew the answer to that, it'd be an easy decision for me. Um, I obviously ended up calling because I have top two pair, but I do think that it is a close decision. Um, one thing that did uh, make me lean further towards calling is that uh, it is possible we're chopping with king queen, very possible. Uh, I thought that queen eight suited was somewhat possible. And just the fact that there are very few combos of sets and very, very many combos of other hands. So uh, he doesn't have to be turning his mid hands into a bluff that often for um, for this call to be correct. And, you know, one justification that uh, I hate to use too much, but it's never that bad to use, is that I am very much towards the top of my range. And against a tough player, that is something to consider. Um, you risk being exploitable if you don't. Um, call with the hands at the very top of your range, assuming that they're somewhat balanced. So he did have bottom pair that he turned into a uh, bluff. He, um, the fact that he called with deuce three suited made a few of the other things I said uh, a little 
less likely to be true, like that he would call, or that he would be unlikely to call with 3-5 suited or 8-5 suited or 8-3 suited. Uh, I'm more likely to 3-bet those, because I'd put 2-3 suited somewhat in the same category, and the king-x suited. Um, but those didn't, those didn't matter on the river, but they mattered on the turn. Um, and it actually makes my river call slightly better, since it is possible he could be raising a king-3 type hand for value. And it looks like the game's breaking. And I'm not really interested in playing Z heads up. So, um, yeah, that was it. Part three of three. Um, I have been very much MIA in the last uh, month, I would say. And I'm sorry about that. Hopefully things will be settling down for me soon, but they haven't yet. Um, but I will get to the comments on the two videos, the two previous videos in this series, and, and the comments on this video. Uh, I just haven't been able to yet. Uh, and it still hasn't really calmed down yet, but hopefully uh, sometime soon, soon I'll get to that, and I do apologize for that. Uh, so yeah, let me know if you have any questions or comments, and I don't know, suggestions. Um... Thanks for watching. This is uh, Phil Galfland for BlueFirePoker.com. Take care.